Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So in our last video, we talked about resistors in series. Today, we're going to talk about resistors in parallel. And a good way to think about resistors in parallel is think of like the two doors to your classroom. Um, now, some of your classrooms only don't have two doors, so we could even think about like the boys' entrance and the girls' entrance to Kenwood. You can, you can go from the outside to the inside through two different doors. So because there's two different paths, we call that parallel. So we have to obviously have a different equation. And so our equation is 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over the, resist the, first, bleh, resist the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor. And so this is actually a lot more challenging of a problem because you have to take the reciprocal of the two, add them together, and then take the reciprocal of that. And which is just a fancy way of saying you got to take 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and then remember to flip that thing on itself. So if we're adding two different numbers together, does that mean that we're going to have to find common denominators for yeah, all of these? Yeah, I mean, well, so I could push this through a calculator, and I, that might help me, but I like to do the common denominator because it's actually easier to flip for me. Okay, so let's look at our example of 2 and 3 ohm resistor. And these are the exact same resistors as we used in the series circuit, mm -hmm. and we're going to make some parallels here. So we take 1 over 2 and 1 over 6. What's a good common denominator for that? Well, you said 1 over 6, six didn't I? Yeah. so it was, it's actually 1 over 3, and you gave us our common denominator of 1 over 6. Look okay. at me, craziness. So, so to get 1 over 2 to, to, six, to the 6, we have to multiply that by 3. So we get 3 over 6 and 2 over 6, which gives us 5 over 6. Perfect. And then we, once again, have to take the reciprocal of that. So instead of our answer being 5 over 6, we're going to flip that information, and that becomes 6 over 5. And then we can reduce it to 1.2 ohms. For resistors in parallel, the combined resistance will always be smaller than the lowest resistor. So it's actually easier to pass it through two resistors than it is to pass through one? Absolutely. The, the net resistance, and you remember for that series circuit, the combined resistance was 5 ohms. Here we've actually reduced the resistance by putting those resistors in parallel. So if you look at your notes, you, you can actually compare the two amps, the, the, the two currents between each other, and when we multiply, nine, and, uh, we multiply and find out our current is 7.5 amps, which is much larger than our last one. Yeah, and so again, just like combining resistors gives a smaller resistance when in parallel, we're going to get a larger current. Now here, we can do the exact same thing we did with the circuit in series. But we're going to change things. And a really good way I like to explain potential for resistors in parallel are water slides. If you go to the top of the tower and there are three different water slides, they all go from the top of the tower to the bottom of the tower. So they run parallel. But they all go from the top to the bottom. So they all have the same gravitational potential energy. Same is true for resistors in parallel. They all have the same potential difference. So we can just assume that they're both 9 volts. That's exactly. What okay. So when we look at solving, because we can go back and we can actually solve for the current of each resistor, we're traveling through each resistor, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can solve using our potential equals current times resistance, and so that we can find our different values. It seems interesting. These seem to add up to a, certain, a number that we've seen before. Yeah, in fact, we're going to find, just like with resistors in series, how the sum of all the potentials added up to the total potential difference, for resistors in parallel, if we add up the current, we're going to get the total current. So we're just writing that out a little bit more. And so current of our entire circuit, is that what P stands for? Yep, for a parallel circuit. Okay, so current 1 plus current 2 equals the, the current of the parallel circuit. And this is known as, as, we often call it the junction rule, but it's the Kirchhoff's junction rule. You can see that I misspelled this, so i got to give him good credit and spell his name correctly there. Are two H's. Once again, the guy that discovered it got his name put on it. We've been talking a lot about that in, in this unit where we keep seeing these funny names, coulombs, and so on and so forth. And that's because we see that you discover it, you get a name, a name after you. 